Welcome to you, my name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction. Today I am bringing you a video that I was encouraged to do via tag from Vivian Connolly and if you haven't come across Viv on YouTube yet, go and check out her channel. I will link her video below and she's recently done a series of the 10 Louis Vuitton bags that she would highly recommend buying and the 10 Louis Vuitton bags that she does not recommend buying. And for that video, she tagged me and a couple of other YouTubers to share our thoughts and opinions. And the reality is, these are the types of videos that more people watch. People really seem to find it useful to look at lists of things that don't work or are unpopular or are overpriced. So on the basis that we all want to save ourselves from making mistakes when it comes to putting down significant amounts of money for handbags, I am going to share with you from my own experience five bags that I have personally owned and experienced and would not recommend and five bags that I have considered quite closely in the boutique that I haven't pressed go on and the reasons why. And I hope that they are helpful for you in terms of considering purchasing a Louis Vuitton handbag. So the first bag that I want to share with you is the Louis Vuitton Speedy. I know, shock horror, in larger sizes in the classic style. Now, the Speedy is one of Louis Vuitton's classic bags, and originally it did not come with the bandolier strap. It was a handheld bag only. Now, I am talking specifically about the larger sizes in that classic style because I myself have owned and still own a 35 Speedy. I bought this bag when I didn't know anything really about Louis Vuitton bags. I just wanted to buy one and so I went into the boutique many, many years ago and said, show me what you've got and I'll pick out something I like. Like you probably would have done any time you went to buy a new handbag or a new wallet, you'd go into a store and say, can you please show me what you have? I want it to do this and that. Well, I did that in Louis Vuitton, which was probably a little naive of me, but Anyway, I did love this bag um, and I used it, but you can see how big it is. And this is hand carry only. And I just find for me, they're very, very cumbersome. Um, they might be classics, but I don't, I, I think that the benefit of, you know, being some 60 to 70 years in the future from when this bag was originally made, um, or maybe even more, uh, that we would have learned about things that are more practical um, or potentially more fashion forward. I find this a bit of a doctor bag. Um, yep, I loved it for the time, but it's definitely not for me now. I keep it because I'm too embarrassed to sell it because of the condition um, that it was in, I sent it to a bag spa. Long story short, the texture of the bag is not fabulous anymore. It's too, I don't want to give it away. I don't want to keep it. I'm kind of stuck. If you've got any ideas around what I should do with that bag, please let me know. Number nine on my list, and I'm counting down. Um, should I count down or should I count up? I'm just going to count down... <laughs> I'm just going to share with you five bags, yes, of each one. Okay, so the second bag that I've owned that I don't recommend, and Viv mentioned this in her video also, is the Louis Vuitton Twist in the MM size. Now, I'm not talking about the twist overall because I actually really crush on a PM size twist that Amelia Rose has in her closet, and it's a limited edition seasonal bag. Surprise, surprise, me going for a seasonal bag. Unheard of. But my twist that I recently sold um, through a site here called Enter Offer, unsponsored, um, but Enter Offer offer the opportunity for you to sell your bag and buy bags with confidence online just in Australia only at this point. But a lot of you responded to my video where I mentioned them previously and said, geez, I hope they come to, the, um, to Europe and the US. And I do believe that that will happen, but they need to get more stock on their platform in order for their profile 
to increase and their consumer confidence to increase. And then when that happens, bam, if you want to check out Interoffer, there is a link in the description box below. But I sold my twist on Interoffer and I had a fabulous experience. The twist I purchased back in 2017 and it was actually an exchange for another bag my husband had bought me in those colours. Mine was in the Coquelicot colour. I'll pop a photo in just to show you what I'm talking about. Um, and the tote that he originally purchased for me was just a, you know, not a great um, not a great functional bag for me and I understand why he bought it because I'd had bags like that in the past and that will come up a bit later and I really loved the idea of the twist and so I suggested I could exchange it same color and hardware combination but in a handbag now I purchased the MM it's probably a bit structured for me for the size of it if it was a smaller size the PM I think I'd be okay with the structure of it um, I think that it's a beautiful, beautiful bag. I love the novelty of the hardware, but I found the MM size, particularly for what I was using it for, which was more evenings or occasions, was just too big. So I wouldn't recommend the MM size unless it's going to be kind of your daily bag or you need to carry quite a lot of essentials with you when you're out at events and so on. The third bag that I have had experience with that I would not recommend buying, and again, it's controversial, I know, but it's just a, it's just my personal opinion, and it's the Pochette Matisse. I bought into the hype of the Pochette Matisse. I was super lucky that I have a fabulous sales advisor at Louis Vuitton who was able to source that bag for me at the height of the peak. I got it. I was a bit ho-hum about it. I actually continued to choose my Clapton bag over the Pochette Matisse whenever I needed a bag that would carry that much and particularly for travel. And the reasons the Pochette Matisse is not something that I um, would recommend people buying, and again, it's just from my own experience, is I saw that bag primarily as a travel bag. Um, that kind of color combination is not something I'd use as a daily bag I have to say just the monogram and the vachette uh, I know that you can protect the vachette with bandeaus from Louis Vuitton or you know similar products from other brands but I don't really like accessorizing my bags in that way um, and I think if you've got to add things to to the bag then it's Either there's a, a design challenge or it just didn't have enough of a pop of its own to start with. So I would pick this bag every time and I held onto that bag probably out of respect for my sales associate more than anything because I didn't want to sell it after all of the work she'd done to source that bag for me. However, like many of you have told me in the past when I've been umming and ahhing about keeping bags, why would you keep that kind of money just sitting on the shelf? And so I did eventually sell it, but I think I waited a little too long and I sold it in 2020. And that was when there were a lot more Pochette Matisse available in the online store because we were all locked down and the online sales for Louis Vuitton were really an important part of their business because they're one of the only houses that provides online sales. So I didn't, you know, return a big profit on that bag, not that I ever expected to, but it, it just, it, yeah, it didn't work out for me and I think um, it was a, the masculine style of it, the messenger kind of satchel style of it, um, the colours, the challenges in terms of um, taking care of the vachette, um, and the closure. I did a whole video on it, you can check that out if you want to, but yeah, I, I don't recommend it. Uh, so the next item is one that I referred to before when I was talking about the twist, which is seasonal totes. Seasonal totes that aren't big enough to fit a laptop. Uh, for me, again, I would not recommend buying any tote that doesn't fit a laptop because ultimately I want my bags to work and I use my bags. Um, and when I say use them, I don't keep them for best. And so I had a couple of totes. Uh, one was the Louis Vuitton Venus, and I've talked about it a few times on this channel. It was too big to um, be easy to carry around. It did have a shoulder strap, but it didn't look particularly great carried with a shoulder strap, so it really was a handheld bag. 
and it didn't fit a laptop. In fact, it didn't fit much because it had a centre divider, so it really limited what you could fit inside of that bag. And then my husband came home with a twist tote, and it was the same kind of dimension because he thought, well, that's what I liked. Um, and so for me, the, the the reason I don't recommend them is, a they're not really practical. They're a bit bag for a day, a bit big for a daily bag, um, but a bit small for a laptop. And b when you figure that out and you go to sell them on, there is zero money involved there's a lot of effort for very little payback and it's kind of heartbreaking to go here's a bag I didn't use much didn't serve a purpose now I'm trying to sell it and I can't even get you know kind of half of what I paid for it so I don't recommend buying those sorts of bags finally the last bag again no longer in my collection and I've mentioned it a few times on my channel is keepalls so keepalls used for traveling I had the keepall 45 I bought it just before I went on holiday. It did kind of come in handy just to have packed up flat in the top of my suitcase in the event that I did any luxury shopping or I perhaps did any shopping at all or breakable things that I wanted to carry with me on the plane that I could pull that bag out, put those items in and then carry that with me on the plane and not worry about it being crushed in the, um, in the cargo hold. I don't recommend it because it's cumbersome it's expensive. It had mine was the traditional version. It had a lot of vachette on it, uh, and I know a lot of people who talk about that bag have watermarks and stains all over their vachette because they've used it as a gym bag or they've used it for travel, and inherently it's had some rain on it. Or in my case, um, it was in the boot or trunk of the car. And my husband put a bag of ice next to it and the uh, the condensation from the ice got onto my vachette and just... Anyway, um, again, I sold that bag and it took me a long time to get to that point because I wondered, was the money that I was going to make even worth letting the bag go? And again, I had to remind myself, hey, listen, it's just sitting in a basket doing nothing at the moment or you could have the money and do something with it and I think anything's better than nothing and I'm not someone that wants to hold on to things just because I worry what it means if I don't. All right, so let's move on to the five bags I wouldn't recommend that I have looked at in boutique and for various reasons I have decided to pass on them. The first one is the Capucines Mini. Now, I recently purchased my Capucines BB up here, and that size just works great on my frame, uh, and it's also quite practical as well. I did, and I have to dob in Amelia Rose here, um, she has a couple of minis, and I was looking at getting my bag in the mini size, but it was yellow. It's beautiful um, and for those of you who don't like the scrunchy handle because you have watched um, what my husband has said about my bags uh, <laughs> I love it um, but uh, yeah the mini super tricky because the handle doesn't move and it still has a center compartment in it and so what that means is you've got to play Tetris with your things it's really tricky to get in things it's really tricky to get in and out of quickly and efficiently it does look cute though, um, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend purchasing that bag if you want a functional bag. You may as well, you know, get a teeny tiny little bag, energy bag, Cassie Thorpe style, because for what you can carry in these things and how easily you can access them, I don't think they're worth it. And they're huge, huge investment. They're a lot of money. They're not cheap. The next bag that I wouldn't recommend is the Neverfull in the PM size. I bought the MM size in the World Tour and to be honest this is probably like it's just perfect but I feel like I could have done it with the GM size. It would have given it a lot more versatility than what the MM size does but I don't think you can do World Tour in the GM size and I wanted that black treated leather so I didn't have to worry about vachette staining and the like. The PM size to me... <sighs> Is kind of like the petite sack plait. I don't see a purpose for it and it kind of fits into that category I talked to before where it's too small to fit a laptop and to be useful. The shoulder drop, um, so to put your arm through and wear it on your shoulder is quite small so it's great for petite people I suppose. 
but yeah it just it was kind of a useless size um, for me and you know if you find that you like similar bags to me or you're of a similar frame to me then I yeah I wouldn't recommend the PM at all. The next one uh, and again this might ruffle a few feathers is the pochette accessories or pochette accessoire. I know that they have a heritage with the brand but I really think that they are overpriced pouches um they <laughs> I think that I think that they're really plain and if you're looking for understated luxury having LV monogram on a bag isn't understated at all I actually saw the pochette accessoire in store when I purchased my favorite and for a lot of reasons people don't like the favorite And I think that's because they believe this replaced the Eva clutch and they like the Eva clutch better. I like the favourite because it has a flap um, instead of a zipper. I like that it has a bit of gold hardware and it has this chain so it's a little bit more versatile in how you wear it. You're not just stuck with a tiny little Vachetta strap that um, that's not really long enough to do anything with besides wear on your shoulder. So inevitably you find that you've got to buy another strap for that bag anyway to make it work for you in a more versatile way. I did buy another strap for this bag because I like my crossbody to hang a little bit longer or at least I did at the time and now I don't need it to be that long. But um, I have the option of taking this off and putting it away. You don't get an option really with your pochette accessoire and I just think it's yeah I, I get why people like it um, but I wouldn't recommend it. I'd look for something else. I don't know what other alternatives there are at the moment they kind of do the same job. I'd keep an eye on the pre-love market for these and I've helped a few of my subscribers actually locate a favorite and they have really loved it too. Okay, the next one, and I actually think that Viv might have recommended this one, but um, I am going to do the opposite, and that is the vanity bags. Vanity bags as handbags, I just, they look like vanity bags, and for that reason, I don't recommend them. I think it's, they will sit in a time and place in terms of what we enjoy about luxury, and then we'll move on. Uh, in some case, they stick out too far from your body really because of their boxy nature to be able to wear them crossbody or even on the shoulder I found. I think it was really smart from Louis Vuitton to move toward releasing a bag that was designed as a handbag rather than people converting the Nice BB into a handbag. But I just, having tried it, um, I... I I think it's a novelty. I think that if you want something to store your makeup in, then get the actual travel pieces because they're made to store cosmetics. They've got a different lining than the vanity handbags do, which are that microfiber. Yeah, that's one that I would not recommend. And the final one, I concur with Vivon, and that is the on-the-go totes um, in the original GM size, but also in the MM size. And I do hear a little rumor that they may be getting discontinued. There have been um, some reports of quality issues where the lining of the bag and the outside of the bag or the exterior of the bag have become separated. That's not the reason that I wouldn't recommend buying them because I wasn't aware of that until I watched Viv's video. I wouldn't buy them because of how boxy they are. And for me, I see that bag, it's on the go. So that implies to me, I'm going to be traveling with it. The challenge with such a structured bag is it's too big to slide under the seat in front of you in an airplane. And it may also be too big to put in the overhead compartment. And when you've got handles that um, are structured and sit straight up like that, even though there is that longer shoulder strap option you're going to damage the bag and you're going to find that you get wear on top of the bag as you slide it under seats and kind of pull it out now i do that with my Neverfull, um and i don't have any real issues with it because i can kind of squish it down this kind of soft structured well this kind of soft or less structured canvas with the flappy handles means that i can kind of squish it down 
and shove it under the seat and I'm not going to damage any of these bits um, on the seat in front of me and the base of it doesn't have anything to catch on either and so therefore it slides really easily um, if I didn't have an organizer in it it would probably be a big mess and if I do need it to be more flexible I can take the organizer out and you know really take full advantage of the mess so for those reasons I would not recommend buying the on the go tote so there you have it. They are the 10 bags from Louis Vuitton, half of which I have personally experienced and half of which I've got very close to purchasing but haven't. I, I wouldn't recommend any of them. I understand that people love them and you do you. That's what luxury and fashion and style, most importantly, is all about personal preference. So um, enjoy your things. Personally, these are things that I just wouldn't go near again and I hope that it's been helpful for anybody who is considering these items to kind of get um, another perspective um, about how they've worked out for me. So if there are bags that you would add to the list, uh, what would you put down? How can we help each other to avoid making some of these very expensive mistakes that you just don't want to make? Or if you do, you want to minimize them at least. Pop your suggestions down in the comments below. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I put out videos on Wednesdays and Sundays. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.